If you believe Black Lives Matter, it's time for you to step up because the coronavirus is killing black people in Shelby County. Hey, listen, 61% of all COVID-19 deaths are among black people. A big reason for this is we often have other health conditions like asthma, diabetes, heart disease, or maybe you're carrying a little extra weight right now. Like me. If this is you, then you need to limit your contact with other people. And make sure you are extra careful. Make sure you wear a mask. Keep six feet between you and other people. Wash your hands often and run. Don't walk away from anybody who might be sick. Doing these things will keep you healthy and show that Black Lives Matter is more than just a slogan to you. What's happening, Boulevard family? I'm Jeremy Pierre. This is your video announcement. Get your pens, get your paper, write them down because we want you to stay connected to everything that's happening here at the Boulevard. If you are a registered voter and do not wish to vote in person due to the COVID-19 situation, you are eligible to request an absentee ballot by mail. You also have the option to vote in person during early voting or on election day. Applications can be downloaded at shelbyvote.com. And remember, those absentee ballots are due no later than July 30th. Exercise your right to vote. You better. Boulevard men, we have something very special for you. It's the Momentum Men's Virtual Breakfast. It's going to happen Saturday, July 11th at 8 a.m. Boulevard men, join your brothers in Christ for a fun and impactful time of studying God's Word. RSVP is required and can be done using the link in E! News on Facebook or Instagram. Hey everyone, the Boulevard is looking to expand the reach of discipleship by creating new life groups. Call your family, friends, neighbors, and even your co-workers. Gather them virtually to study God's Word together. No experience is required. Training and ongoing support will be provided. Anyone interested in hosting a group of 3 to 12 people through a study should contact Reverend Angel Johnson today at johnson.angel at the boulevard.org. Boulevard, we want you to tune in every Wednesday at noon in July for Boulevard Manor Moments. Come get fed on bite-sized lessons from God's Word as you move about your day. Calling all children kindergarten through fifth grade. Join us for Disciple Town virtual worship every Sunday at 12.30 p.m. on Zoom using the link in e -news. All middle, high school, and college students are highly encouraged to tune in every Sunday at noon for the Nexus Pod. That's the place of discipleship. It's going down on Instagram Live, y'all. So follow the Nexus Boulevard youth today on Instagram. And speaking of worship, don't forget that you have two awesome opportunities to worship with us every Sunday. We want you to join us every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. on Facebook Live or YouTube as we make a joyful noise across the airwaves and into homes all across the world. Invite people to join you for virtual service. We don't want you to be greeted with it. We want you to create a watch party. Download and share the graphic and e-news and use the hashtag Boulevard Connect so people can join in on this awesome worship experience. The church buildings, they are still closed, but the Boulevard is still living out the gospel of Jesus Christ because of your giving. Just last month, we were able to provide over 29,000 meals to those in need. We were also able to provide over 1,200 ready-made meals for some of our seniors and assisted living and frontline medical workers as they tirelessly work to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. This wouldn't be possible. It for sure wouldn't be possible without you. There are multiple ways to give. You can text Boulevard Midtown to 77977. You can cash app the Boulevard using dollar sign Mississippi Boulevard, PayPal, or by mail. Your giving makes the difference. Boulevard, we want you to keep up with all the latest happenings and updates that's happening here at the Boulevard by basically paying attention to your e-news or our social media posts on Facebook and Instagram. Use the hashtag Boulevard Connect as you're watching from home. Show us your worship space. Take a picture of your family at church. Share how you are using those devotionals and more. Let's stay connected, y'all. And Boulevard, don't forget to register for Right Now Media. It's our digital resource library for Life Group. Simply text right now, the Boulevard to 41411 or use the web link in eNews to gain access to thousands of free studies 
for your group. Greetings and welcome to the Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church. We're so glad that you have joined us today. Based on Ephesians 3.20, we are a church leading, learning, living, and loving without limits. Thank you for joining us for this time of worship. If you happen to be viewing this service via Facebook Live, share with your family and your friends. You know there's nothing like a watch party for God. And if you happen to be viewing this from the NBCC YouTube channel, click the bell to subscribe. We would love to stay connected with you. So send us an email at info at theboulevard.org and you can visit our website at www.theboulevard.org. Again, welcome and enjoy our worship experience. Oh, praise the Lord. Come on, we came to give the Lord praise. Come on, right where you are. Come on and help us lift up the name of the Lord this morning. Come on, we came to give him praise. Come on, put those hands together. Listen, God is great.
came to do my dancing. I 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 came to give him praise. 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 I came to leave for joy. Leap on the poverty, leap on the depression, leap on joy, leap on joy, leap on joy. Now somebody give the Lord praise. Somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and stretch your hands in the presence of the Lord. The Lord made us a promise that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. If you know that to be true, come on and lift up your hands. Just begin to give the Lord sound of worship now. We honor you. We bless you. And we give your name praise. Hallelujah. No waste time. I've come too far from where I started from, and nobody told me that the road would be. brought me this far to leave me.
you join with me in a moment of prayer. God, our Savior and our help, we come to you on this morning with our eyes closed and our heart humbled, God, just to say thank you. Thank you, God, that you have never left us. Thank you, God, that you continue to keep us. Thank you, God, that you continue to be the God that you have promised that you would always be. God, we worship you on this morning in spirit and in truth. As we know, the world is turning upside down, but you are still yet reigning on this world. God, we know that you've called us to the task, and God, that you never take vacation so that we can rest in your arms. So on that, God, we give you hallelujah praise. God, we thank you for the opportunity to worship on this morning, even if it is virtual, because God, walls don't define us as your people. God, ceilings and addresses don't define us as your body of believers. So God, help us to transform this world by living out the gospel of Jesus Christ that you have given us through your son. God, I pray for anybody in need on this morning, anybody seeking healing, oh God, in the mind, body, and spirit. God, anybody seeking provision, oh God, anybody seeking anything from you, oh God, I pray that you would incline your ear to them and answer them in only a way that you can. Now, as we move on in our worship service, I pray, God, that you would rain down your spirit on us, oh God. God, for those of us who are tired, I pray, God, that you energize us to run on just a little bit further. God, I even pray for those who may tune in that don't know you and may not be in relationship with you, oh God, that they would run to you, oh God, and say, what must I do to be saved? God, that they will have an everlasting relationship with you that can be unbroken. God, I pray that when the benediction is said, that we are better than we were before, that we move a little bit better, God, that we pray a little bit harder, God, that we make wiser decisions, oh God, as we live day by day. God, we love you, we honor you, and we thank you for all that you're doing, all that you've already done, God, and all that we have faith that we know you will do in the future. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on and just lift up your hands and begin to worship the Lord. God, we love you. We honor you. We declare that there's no one like you in all of the earth. So we lift this praise to you. You're the 
only living God. Oh, you're the only living God. Come on, sing. You're the only living God. You are. You're the only living God. Come on, sing. You're the only living God. You are. You're the only living God. Come on, sing. You're the only living God. You say. You're the only living God, and we love you. You're the only living God. Yes, come on. See, you're the only living God. You are. I want you to take in your hand whatever it is you access the Word of God on, whether that's your mobile device, whether that's your tablet, whether that's a physical copy of a leather-bound Bible. I want you to take that out, and I want you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 14 as we continue journeying through the life of Abram, who will eventually be named Abraham. And as we journey through his life, we continue our series, Uncharted, Navigating the Next Normal. It's in Genesis chapter 14, verses 17 through 24, 
I want to read in your hearing on today. And it reads as such. After his return from the defeat of Kedorlaomer and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh, that is the king's valley. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God most high, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. And the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the persons, but take the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted my hand to the Lord God most high, possessor of heaven and earth, that I would not take a thread or a sandal strap or anything that is yours, lest you should say I have made Abram rich. I will take nothing but what the young men have eaten and the share of the men who went with me. Let Aner, Eschol, and Mamre take their share. We pick up the narrative of the life of Abram fresh off of a victory in which he and 318 trained loyal men defeated four armies to recover not only the spoils of war, but Abram's nephew Lot and his family. To be absolutely clear, Abram and the 318 were not enough to win the battle alone. God was on their side and gave them victory against all odds. Abram triumphantly returned to the region of the plain where Lot was resided, and he is met by two kings, the king of Sodom and the king of Salem. One of these kings we're familiar with because of Lot's initial move into this area, but the other king seems to be a mysterious figure who comes onto the scene in this moment and whom we will not hear or see of again except with an honorable mention in Psalms 110 and Hebrews 7. Their encounter with Abram in this portion of the narrative allows us to see another facet of his life of faith. It is one that many of us really consider because we're oftentimes only looking through the prism of struggle. If we're honest, most of us are conditioned to deal with adversity, trials, and struggles, but seldom are we cultivated to handle the success that God crowns our lives with. This is why a professional athlete can make millions of dollars during their career and retire virtually broke because of their inability to handle success. Even more accessible is the reality that you can reach the heights of your career, the pinnacle of your profession, have all of the accoutrements that define success in a materialistic way and yet allow it all to slip through your fingers because you lack the virtues necessary to handle success. And I think it's important that we observe the life of Abram because he is literally coming off of a tremendous victory. Although he is fresh off of victory, which we can call a success, we encounter the reality that victories can be self-defeating in that they can cause us to think more highly of ourselves than we really should have us reading our own press clippings and believing the hype. What we'll note in Abram's life when he experiences success is that he possesses an indispensable virtue called integrity. Abram is celebrated for his faith and he's vilified for his flaws, but in this episode within his life, it is his integrity that shines brightest. It takes a person with integrity, substance, and character to embrace the successes and victories that God brings into their lives and not allow it to go to their heads. Integrity is something that we're not born with, but it's something that is birthed into the life of an individual who is willing to align their behavior and beliefs, whether they're in public or in private, and will do so whether it's convenient or popular. John Maxwell, in his book, Developing the Leader Within You, wrote, image is what people think we are, integrity is what we really are. Too many of us have masterfully crafted our image and cultivated our public persona but have not invested in developing the kind of integrity that's required to navigate new seasons and particularly the next normal that we're entering into, whether we're ready or not. Integrity is what will anchor you in the midst of the howling winds of change, the dark valleys of life, and the mountaintops that we are blessed to reach with the help of God. 
Abram models this. If you look at this narrative, you'll first see Abram's integrity in that he's able to handle the temptation of pride. As verse 17 informs us of Abram's return in victory and how the king of Sodom came out to meet him, verse 18 then tells us that Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high. It's intriguing to note that from the way this scene is depicted, although the king of Sodom is first out, he's not the first that Abram acknowledges. Abram's attention goes to Melchizedek who brings bread and wine. Now, as we study the historical content, we know that bread and wine was the way a hero was greeted returning from victory. But it was also a priestly act because we know that Melchizedek is a priest king. While Abram could have seen this as an act to celebrate his accomplishment and to allow his ego to swell with pride, on the contrary, what we see is that he allows himself to be led into worship by this priest king. In worship, he is postured to receive a blessing, and that is what he gets. Listen to what verse 19 and 20 suggest. And he blessed him and said, blessed be Abram by God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Melchizedek pronounces a blessing over Abram that acknowledges how and why Abram was victorious by proclaiming the who of his situation. In a nutshell, Melchizedek helps Abram to see his success in light of what God has done. Abram is able to resist the temptation to live with an inflated ego in light of what he has been able to accomplish because he knows none of it could be possible without the help of God. When you think about it, that's what integrity looks like. It's knowing who the credit goes to, even if it means correcting the narrative of who it rightfully belongs to. The good news is that he realizes that even if he doesn't get the credit, God still gave him the victory. You and I must get to the point that even when we experience a certain sense of accomplishment and success, we don't allow it to go to our heads to the point that we are misguided about who is responsible for the blessings we've received. And it takes a person who in their walk with God has enough integrity that when they boast of what it appears they have accomplished, they instead make sure God gets all the glory. Isn't this what Jesus calls us to do in the Beatitudes when he says, let your light so shine before men that others will see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven. It's not only resisting the temptation to have pride, but it's also in the ability to resist the temptation of claiming ownership over what God has blessed us to possess. Let's be clear. The Bible declares to us over and over again, but most clearly in the Psalms, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. It's true that everything we have comes from God, but everything that it not only comes from God, but it belongs to God. So when Abram continues his encounter with Melchizedek, who brought out bread and wine, who blesses him, he gives unto God through Melchizedek a tithe. Now, it is important for us to note that this is the first mention of tithing in Scripture, and it's at a time when we didn't have the law from Sinai. So when we look at how he gives a tithe of the spoils of war, it's not given in response to a command. Malachi 3 wasn't even written where it says, bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. In addition to this not being a command, when Abram gives, he is not looking for anything in return. So we can conclude that he is giving purely from his heart as an act of worship. Can I challenge each of us to know that when it comes to our giving, we should never get it twisted. Whatever we have already belongs to God. God has entrusted us with that which is in our possession so long as we know it belongs to God. So when we give, we're giving back to God what belongs to God as an act of worship. But as much as it is an act where we demonstrate our trust of God, it's where God can see whether we can be trusted. And I believe part of what this text teaches us, whenever God blesses us, and whatever God blesses us with, we should handle it in a way 
that we have integrity like Abram to know it's our opportunity to show that we know ultimately who all of what we possess belongs to. But my brothers and sisters, can I ask you, can God trust you with the treasure he affords you to have in life? As Abraham is clear as to what he possesses and belongs to God, here again in Abram's story, we see that he would not succumb to the temptation of allowing his possessions to have power over him. We saw this first when Abram and Lot returned from Egypt, and we see it now as a return from a victorious battle with the spoils of war. Whereas the king of Salem brought out bread and wine, the king of Sodom comes out to Abram as he is returning and he comes out empty handed. I don't have time to deal with all of that, but in short, he makes Abram an offer to allow him to take the people and let Abram take everything else. What's laughable is that the king of Sodom literally had no right to anything that Abram brought back because the ancient rules of warfare dictated that Abram, not the king of Sodom, had the right to all he returned with from the battlefield. But the kind of man that Abram was and the kind of integrity that he was grounding his life by, he gave the king this response. I've lifted my hand to the Lord, God most high, possessor of heaven and earth, that I would not take a thread or a sandal strap or anything that is yours, lest you should say I've made Abram rich. Abram had made a vow to the Lord that he would not even take the smallest portion of the spoils of war for himself. And the reason why is that he didn't want anyone, especially this wicked king, to take credit for and co-opt what God has done specifically for him. It demonstrates a kind of integrity and commitment to divorce oneself from the things of this world in order to honor one's commitment to God. And that's integrity. It's to be able to live in the world and not to allow the world to get in on the inside of us. I tell you, it's like Otis Moss III who tells the story of during a time when he was pastoring Trinity United Church of Christ. Jeremiah Wright, the pastor emeritus of that church, was under fire for comments that he, has made, he had made. And those comments were taken out of context in the midst of the first presidential run of Barack Obama. And in the midst of that, he was receiving death threats on a daily basis. So one night in particular, he heard a thumping in his house. His wife deputized him to get up and search things out. And so he picked up his Louisville slug and began to search around his house, but he did not see any disturbance. When he finally continues hearing the thumping, he finds where it's coming from. It's coming from one of his daughter's bedrooms. He opens the door, the lights are out. When he finally turns on the light, he sees her ponytails bouncing around her head as she was dancing. And she said to her father, daddy, look at me dance. She kept twirling and twirling to which he says, get back in the bed. But then as he left her room, spiritual bells began to ring in his soul. He said, in the darkness of night, my daughter was dancing in the midst of the dark. And what allowed her to dance in the dark was that although darkness was around her, it didn't get on the inside of her. And that's what God is calling us to do, not only as it relates to our praise, but how we live our lives in this evil and wicked world is that you and I as children of God must live in such a way that although the world might be crumbling beneath our feet and all around us, we have a faith and a trust in God that the world won't get on the inside of us and we'll be able to continue to live for God's praise and God's glory. One of the most powerful and the ultimate example of what that looks like is in the person of Jesus Christ. Although he was in human flesh, and although he was tempted at all points as we were, he did not sin. And so today I want to invite somebody who doesn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ to begin the journey with Jesus on the day. He'll give you brand new life. He'll walk with you each and every day. He'll give you the strength you need to withstand the pressure of temptation in the days of your life as we look forward to spending eternity with Jesus Christ. If you want to put your faith, hope, and trust in Jesus, 
send an email right now to connect at the boulevard.org. If you send that in this very moment, our staff will be in touch with you to assist you with making the decision that God is calling you to make today. Or maybe you're somebody who wants to get connected with our church and we'd be so excited to have you as part of our church family. The Boulevard is a movement of wholeness in this fragmented world. And we want you to join us on this journey that if you're already saved and you're looking for a church home, even during this time, wherever you are in the world or the nation, I want you to send an email to connect at theboulevard.org. And we'd be excited to get you connected with our church. Well, brothers and sisters, as always, y'all know I miss y'all. I love you all dearly. Pray for you daily. I want you all to stay connected. I've been praying that God would knit us closer together as a church, even in this time of physical distancing. Please stay in touch with uh, all that's happening in our church through receiving our weekly e-news. If you're not getting that e-news, send an email to info at theboulevard.org and we'll get you added to the list. We want you to stay connected with what God is doing in the life of our church. Continue to wash your hands thoroughly, wear a mask when you have to go out, practice physical distancing, stay in when you don't have to go out. We're going to make it through this together and God is going to give us victory over COVID-19. Well, as we come to the end of our time of worship, I want you to get ready, even in your home, to receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace from this time forth, even forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have an awesome rest of the day. Oh, come on, if you came to bless the Lord, come on and put those hands together like this. Come on. Come on, we will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in our mouth. Come on. Listen, I command my soul to bless the Lord. I command my soul to bless the Lord. Listen, I command my soul to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I command my feet to leap for joy. You yes, sir, I command my feet to leap for joy. Come on, sir. I command my feet to leap for joy. Hallelujah. Come on, so 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 bless the Lord.
joy, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. He's worthy, yes he is. He's worthy, oh. Leap for joy, leap for joy. Come on. believe black lives matter it's time for you to step up because the coronavirus is killing black people in Shelby County hey, listen 61% of all COVID-19 deaths are among black people a big reason for this is we often have other health conditions like asthma diabetes heart disease or maybe you're carrying a little extra weight right now like me if this is you then you need to limit your contact with other people and make sure you are extra careful. Make sure you wear a mask. Keep six feet between you and other people. Wash your hands often and run. Don't walk away from anybody who might be sick. Doing these things will keep you healthy and show that Black Lives Matter is more than just the slogan to you. What's happening, Boulevard family? I'm Jeremy Pierre. This is your video announcement. Get your pens, get your paper, write them down because we want you to stay connected to everything that's happening here at the Boulevard. If you are a registered voter and do not wish to vote in person due to the COVID-19 situation, you are eligible to request an absentee ballot by mail. You also have the option to vote in person during early voting or on election day. Applications can be downloaded at shelbyvote.com. And remember, those absentee ballots are due no later than July 30th. Exercise your right to vote. You better. Boulevard men, we have something very special for you. It's the Momentum Men's Virtual Breakfast. It's going to happen Saturday, July 11th at 8 a.m. Boulevard men, join your brothers in Christ for a fun and impactful time of studying God's Word. RSVP is required and can be done using the link in E! News on Facebook or Instagram. Hey everyone, the Boulevard is looking to expand the reach of discipleship by creating new life groups. Call your family, friends, neighbors, and even your coworkers. Gather them virtually to study God's word together. No experience is required. Training and ongoing support will be provided. Anyone interested in hosting a group of three to 12 people through a study should contact Reverend Angel Johnson today at johnson.angel at the Boulevard. Boulevard, we want you to tune in every Wednesday at noon in July for Boulevard Manor Moments. Come get fed on bite-sized lessons from God's word as you move about your day. Calling all children kindergarten through fifth grade. Join us for Disciple Town virtual worship every Sunday at 12.30 p.m. on Zoom using the link in e -news. All middle, high school, and college students are highly encouraged to tune in every Sunday at noon for the Nexus Pod. That's the place of discipleship. It's going down on Instagram Live, y'all. So follow the Nexus Boulevard youth today on Instagram. And speaking of worship, don't forget that you have two awesome opportunities to worship with us every Sunday. We want you to join us every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. on Facebook Live or YouTube as we make a joyful noise across the airwaves and into homes all across the world. Invite people to join you for virtual service. We don't want you to be greeted with it. We want you to create a watch party. Download and share the graphic and e-news and use the hashtag Boulevard Connect so people can join in on this awesome worship experience. The church buildings, they are still closed, but the Boulevard is still living out the gospel of Jesus Christ because of your giving. Just last month, we were able to provide over 29,000 meals to those in need. We were also able to provide over 1,200 ready-made meals for some of our seniors and assisted living and frontline medical workers as they tirelessly work to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. This wouldn't be possible 
it for sure wouldn't be possible without you. There are multiple ways to give. You can text Boulevard Midtown to 77977. You can cash app the Boulevard using dollar sign Mississippi Boulevard, PayPal, or by mail. Your giving makes the difference. Boulevard, we want you to keep up with all the latest happenings and updates that's happening here at the Boulevard by basically paying attention to your e-news or our social media posts on Facebook and Instagram. Use the hashtag Boulevard Connect as you're watching from home. Show us your worship space. Take a picture of your family at church. Share how you are using those devotionals and more. Let's stay connected, y'all. And Boulevard, don't forget to register for Right Now Media. It's our digital resource library for Life Group. Simply text right now the Boulevard to 41411 or use the web link in eNews to gain access to thousands of free studies for your group.